Hi everyone, welcome to the second part of our planner page. Um, from This is one from Lost Ocean um, and we are using Stella Design Journey pencils. Now I'm having a little look at the colours that I want to use for the coral. Now the coral is quite a complex thing. I quite like to do it all the same though. So I've got three colours in mind actually. I think I'm going to start with number 25. This is pink. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of shading, I think, on each piece. I'm going to start down here. So I'm thinking middle out here. So a bit darker in the middle and out towards the edge. This isn't going to be our only colour. And sort of a bit lighter as we go out like this. This one I think I'll do darker here and lighter here. And I don't know about the shells. I'm going to leave the shell because, yeah, I think I'll do the shells a slightly different colour. I've got this little jug as well. Jug? Urn. Is it? What would you say? Urn. Shell. Just a little bit around there. So making the centres a little bit darker, I would normally do it the other way, but why not? Like that. I also think it sort of makes sense for the edge to be darker. Now, I really like this colour, but we're going to be going over the top of it with something else. But um, it's rather... It's interesting because, you know, I'm not a fan of pinks, but this one. Because it's slightly salmon -y and I like it better than the sort of magenta -y pink. Oh, I'm just going to pop my tablet back on. Switched off because I've been sitting here so long, just in case my boy messages me. Oh. He says his Wi-Fi is working at last. Um, which is good. Means he can keep in touch with me. But I don't think he really needs to. Oh, he said there were six people in his class. Gosh, that was more than normal. That's interesting. Oh, actually, that particular class, she's quite strict. So, uh, that uh, might be why. This looks a bit shell-like, but to be honest, I don't think it is. I'm going to do it like coral. I've got the little crab there, look. So small. Now, this one has got these little tendrils coming out of it, whatever they might be. So, I'm going to do each of these. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. and fade them up. I have got three colours for this particular... Um, oh, I'm lost. I'm going to go down here. Hmm. So that's that one and that's that one. What? That joins to nothing. That might be that one. That's probably... The that one. Mm, I don't know. I've done my best. Now, let's go up here. These. These look a little bit like shells, but I think, because they're joined to the coral, that they might just be coral. So I'm going to... They look like unicorn horns. Of course, that's what they are under the water. <laughs> Uh, I think we'll do a little bit of the edge of these and this one. A lot more coral up here. Start these. Sort of try and fade it off a bit. Quite difficult to stay in the lines. 
Well, for me, you might be better than me, and you probably are. I'm also impatient, I'm trying to be reasonably quick without rushing. Now, the, the lines up here, these are all sea foam, I think, so I'm not going to worry about those now. So we're just doing the sort of round coral bits, just trying to work out exactly what's going on here. That's sea. That's coral. That bit is sea. There we go. So these loopy bits, those are water, I think, or sea foam or whatever. We'll worry about those later. Well, we won't worry about them. See that? That's a bit of um plant. You're gonna grab number seventy-six, fifty-six, not seventy-six. I wrote that down wrong. Hang on. Yeah, when I wrote down what pencils I used. That's what we'll see um, for yesterday's video. I wrote that number down wrong. I think I might know by now, but apparently not. Right. Yeah, apparently the um, Wi Fi is pretty bad in uni anyway, but I guess. Um, Probably depends what building you're in, how far you are away from the router. Router, is that the right word? I don't know. And uh, I doubt they, in fact, my niece who's in Hall's residence says that it's so bad that, um, that they tend to just use their data because it's rubbish. Right. And we're now going to use this colour. This is 222. This is the salmon. Now, if you were using a smaller set and you don't have the salmon, use the 43. I think it would probably work. I'm going to start here and go back the other way. So we're going to go over the top of the pink that we've done already. Just blend this into it. And then I think it looks more of a corally colour. Pink is disappearing a bit more than I expected. I think I need to make sure that I fade towards the edge. Don't press too hard. And then you can see the difference. We can just work all our way back through all the coral again. Now I realise that it looks a little bit boring having it all the same colour with the coral but and coral isn't all the same colour so if you want to definitely go and do some different colours but I just never know what colour to do it. Despite finishing Lost Ocean I still don't know you know. So it's tricky, isn't it, always to choosing colours. I mean, leaves and things are a lot flowers because we see them. I'm not very often under the sea looking at coral, I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't watch like the um, natural history type programmes where they show it and things like that very often. I have done. I mean, of course you can go to um, your search engine and look up pictures. But when I did that, I just had, there were so many different colours, it didn't help me. I just felt like, well, I might as well just do the many colour. But I rather like this colour combo. I'm not sure whether that's supposed to just 
overlap there or whether that's supposed to be some water in between, you know in between them it's easier if it's not so we'll pretend it isn't so I hope you're all doing okay now it's Tuesday isn't it second day of the week well I don't know some people st Sunday starts the week some people Monday starts the week I don't know if it really matters. The second day of the working week. I don't know how many of you work. I, I know quite a few of you are retired or on sick leave, that sort of thing. These long tendrils are quite tricky. But yeah, I'm very lucky that this is my job, although. Yeah, I'm still not sure whether I'll have to go and do something different. Um, it's early days, yeah. I'm going to sharpen so I can do those tendrils. Early days of husband being semi-retired to find out quite how, whether, whether things will work out or not. You know, we have done calculations, that sort of thing. So, but it's just... Um, It's working out whether we're going to be happy to keep, you know, cutting back, sort of thing or not, and things like that. We'll just have to wait and see. Or if we suddenly get some sort of big expense or, you know, we've got savings, so we've got a backup. But they won't last forever, so it's just, you know, I didn't do that one. Back to our room at 56. This one. That looks better, doesn't it? There we go. Let's just pop into these caps. This one, so you've got these little things on the top of the tendrils or the whatever they are. I had thought I might do them a different colour. I'm going to do them this colour because it's pale, I can colour on top of it and then decide later whether I'm going to do another colour. I probably won't. I think it looks, these two colours just look quite pretty together. I haven't really used this one much before and I'm really liking it. Good. And this isn't taking me as long as I thought. Simplifying things can be really helpful time wise. Um, I know it doesn't, we shouldn't always be in a rush to finish, but you know, sometimes it's nice to get something done. I've just got to pop away. I'll be back in a minute. Right, I'm back. Sorry. I mean, you didn't notice I was gone, but <laughs> I had to nip to the loo. <laughs> right, we're continuing with these. It's, uh, it's actually Friday today, even though this is going out on a Tuesday. It's quite strange. <laughs> and. Uh, Trying to think what I'm going to do. I've got to wait, I think, for my son to come home from uni. And I might nip out. I've got a letter to post, actually. And um, some things to drop off at the charity shop. Some more things. And, uh, Nice to go out and get a bit of exercise. Okay, now 
we have our seahorse. I know what colour I'm going to do him. So let's do him next. Number 49 I'm going to use for his sort of fin here. And tail. Oh, and he's got this little bit here. There we go. And then number 16 for his sort of body. If you want to know what colours names Stella have given to their pencils, um, I do, I have looked it up on their website and put it together into a little download on my Kofi. So you can go and find that. Now, what next? Well, we have... I, let's do the shells. Now, I think I'm going to do them in a brown. Number seven is our light brown. I'm going to start with that and sort of do the underneath and up like that. Same here. Sort of up. And the snail shell, I'm just going to do all of it because that one's way too small. Top at the bottom. Like that. And where's the other snail? There he is. Now I wouldn't normally do a sna snail shell just plain like that, but um, when you're 73, um, it's quite difficult to do an house really when it's so small. I don't know if I'll, I'll go over it a little bit, but I don't know if it'll really show up. Here's uh, the I think that's it. I'm just looking. Yeah. I don't know what colour a crab is. I'm going to do the colour in the snails actually because I might forget. I'm going to use number 85. I've fresh sharpened it. This one, this is 73, no, 703, sorry. I'm not, I'm just plain colouring it because there's too many details otherwise. Let's do this vase. I want to make it gold. I think I'm being too ambitious. So I'm just going to use the number 16, which I use as my gold if I don't have one. Now I realise that the, um, the, this is that colour. So I'm going to make it really intense. I'm going to fade it a tad in places to make it look shiny, but I'm going to make it very dark here and then just have like a white line down the middle to look like shine rather than fading it too much. I'll fade it a little bit, but hopefully I'll look a bit of a different colour to, the, um, to this one. I think it looks different enough. Um, jellyfish blue. I'm gonna go dark blues. Um, 
this is number 36 it is the indigo blue it's really dark i'm going to use this for the um for the tentacles because they're narrow i feel like they need a dark color to show up especially once you start doing water i'm struggling to keep them keeping the lines might do better than me probably will it's interesting i was watching a video the other day where someone said they don't do johanna bassford because her details are too small i don't usually find that to be a problem but this book was always smaller details anyway and uh, i'm going to do this one slightly lighter just layering it up slightly less um I think it just, it's all very much personal taste, isn't it? Some people like larger areas, they can do more shading and blending. Other people are quite happy with smaller details that they can just look in. That's very scratchy. Just turn it around. It wants to be scratchy. I don't know if you can hear it scratching on the paper. I'm trying to turn it so that it isn't making a scratch on the paper. Uh, I've never had a stud of pencil do that before. It's quite interesting. Hmm. Maybe I haven't sharpened it yet. Don't know. Oh well. It seems to be behaving a bit better now. Now we're not going to do the main body bit in the same colour now. Jellyfish are often see-through, but this one isn't going to be. I'm now going to use this one, 339, and do the outside. Quite dark. You can see it's a different colour. It's still dark. I think it'll work quite well, because it will stand out from the water. These bits I'm going to do a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to use the 33 whoops, to do the final bit. Let me go over the top maybe. Just going to colour it in and see how it looks. Do I have to go out the line? Let's have a look. Needs a bit more intensity I think. Just going to go over it a bit more. There we go. Now, florals. I'm thinking go purple or pink. I think purple will match better so I'm grabbing my violet number six and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go a bit darker around the edge, a bit lighter into the middle. This colour goes quite well with the other colours we've got here, the oranges and corals and things. There we go. Right, what we have left now for our underwater part is background. Now, I am thinking, what colour is that? The five, I want the 553. Five, this is the thallo green. This is the colour I want to do for the background. It's going to start. Now you could use a soft pastel for this and it would be quicker. But 
getting into all these tiny spaces you couldn't do you'd have to go over the top of everything and of course it would change the color of what you've colored oh, i've just noticed that i missed a leaf there um and if you want to do that you absolutely can but i don't think i want to because obviously um we should be looking through the water at this scene but um, it's uh, you might want to use that as the edge but I feel like this line is coming around there um, yes I, I think it's fairly easy to do with pencil when it's there's such small areas doesn't take long and it's easier to keep it even compared to if you are doing a big area but uh, you, may, you may just want to have a go with your pastels if you've got any but uh, this suits me sort of gentle meditative colouring I'm not pushing too hard just enjoying filling spaces up with a pretty colour basically and uh, yeah just relaxing really I think um, um, I think it's important when you're colouring to sometimes concentrate on relaxing although it's claimed that it's a relaxing hobby sometimes you might not be sometimes you might be it doesn't always take me away from my thoughts if you know what I mean sometimes I'm worrying or thinking about other things especially if I'm doing something like this which is quite meditative so I'm not thinking necessarily about the colouring you know and uh, so you know sometimes it's good to think about um, maybe doing some slow deep breathing or some making sure all your muscles in your body are relaxed that sort of thing you know it's uh, it can really be helpful I think for me relaxation the most relaxing things I do are colouring as long as I'm not keeping an eye on children doing work you know, if I'm if they're here and I'm trying to make sure they're getting on, then that's not relaxing. Um, but if I'm doing it and it's everyone's just having some relaxed time, that's lovely. And also, maybe I might be watching a quiz or something like that. Today I've got some gymnastics I want to watch. So there's the European Championships on, I think, yeah, they started yesterday on the 2nd of May, it's the 3rd of May today. Um, and uh, they, um, um, but they didn't, I managed to watch a little bit of it on Eurovision.com website, but the coverage wasn't particularly good, it was just one static camera on each apparatus, but today um, the BBC are showing it, so we'll get to see. And it sounds bad, but you get a UK bias, then the Brit you get to see the British team more. And uh, they tell you things like what scores they got, which don't always come up on the screen. So I don't always like sports commentary. I don't always find it very useful. But uh, when it comes to things like that, it's quite handy because they can see the scoreboard and you can't necessarily see it. And they can tell you a little bit about the um, gymnast about you know who their coaches where they train what injuries they might have had how many competitions they've done whether they've won it before you know all that sort of thing which is really quite interesting sometimes sometimes it's a bit annoying commentary can get very annoying but you know and um, so I'm looking forward to that um, Basically, it is the I'm trying to think. It's the apparatus final. So the girls do the floor vault beam and 
bars and we don't have any volters at the moment our girls don't aren't particularly strong volters our boys are we've got um got the world champion volter and the men's but um, my girls aren't so they don't they aren't doing that but i think we've got one in all the others which is good so uh, it's nice to see but it's nice to see everyone really you know and uh, I'll look forward to the Olympics. Um, there are certain Olympic sports that I like watching. Um, I always like watching gymnastics and diving. I mean, they're fairly similar in the sense of the sort of acrobatic type elements. Um, you know, a lot of divers are ex-gymnasts, interestingly, because you need that sort of ability for the tumbling type thing and rather than doing it on the floor they do it in the air into the water. I'm going to go over the top of this plant, I can't be bothered with going around all the leaves. You won't notice, no one will know. Um, so uh, um, yeah and also um, as well as diving I like um, um, BMX quite fun um, and skateboarding I like watching and sometimes we have some Brits but it's always a bit um, it's almost who doesn't fall off wins type thing with those but it's very exciting and over with so quickly and then um, um, my son is interested in watching the climbing that's new for this time and um, yeah I'm never very interested in the athletics the field events aren't so bad but I just find watching people running around a track is not really very interesting and same with cycling the shorter cycling races are quite fun um, but the long road race not so much and the same with the triathlon you know, I admire their abilities, but I find watching it a little bit dull. Same as like a marathon, you know, it just goes on too long. You know, I'd rather watch something quick and exciting. It's like on the, um, then also um, sometimes the shooting in the archery is quite interesting because it's something you don't really see, you know, and kayaking and canoes and things you know you don't see it on tv normally and even rowing although i think our rowing teams didn't do so well our rowing teams used to always be very good they didn't do very well last time i think they lost a lot of their funding um in the uk i don't know if it's the same in other countries if you do very well you get funding if you don't do well you don't and it almost feels like it's the wrong way around because if you're doing well maybe you don't need it you know but anyway um so the teams will have a goal amount of medals that they want to try and get and if they can get them then they get their funding sort of thing so but also there's this thing where um apparently in the athletics they're gonna the international athletics association i think it's they're going to give money to the winners, which is interesting because I always thought athletics was an amateur sport. I didn't think there was ever money won, but I did. maybe I'm wrong. But uh, it's all a bit strange because professionals aren't supposed to take part, so was always the rule. And then um, tennis came into it and they're all professional. And so... Um, but there's no prize money, I don't think, and you can't have sponsors. I think you just do it for the honour. And then, but the big top players don't need the money in tennis. But obviously in athletics, if it's, they probably do. And um, then there's football, which is always, oh, it's always a farce in the UK, the football. But um, in the football, um, because... The players, they're all professional. They ha they make the team be young or something. I have to get a bit confused by that. But um, football, 
because football teams in the in the UK um, are split by country or sovereign state I think they call it so England Scotland Wales and Northern Ireland have their own separate football teams when it comes to the World Cup and the Euros and things like that the European Cup but when it comes to the Olympics because we um, compete as Team GB and Northern Ireland so Scotland Wales England Northern Ireland and all come together then the football team is tricky because you can't play the England team because what about Scotland and Wales and so when we hosted the Olympics London 2012 they were forced to put together a team and they took the best Scottish, Welsh, Irish players and put them together with the best English players and made a team which is rubbish because just not used to playing in that sort of team you know those players weren't used to playing together but Ever since then, they've never been able to come to any sort of arrangement. It's a, an embarrassment. It's like, why can't you just, you know, come to an agreement? Maybe have a quarter of the team from each nation. I mean, why not? You know? And then whoever's in charge can pick. Um, so, from, you know, whoever's in charge of the, uh, whoever trains the Olympic team, decides on who's coming from each nation and then they decide who plays. I don't see why it's so difficult but they just we just can't seem to sort it out. It's as I say it's a bit embarrassing really. I'm sure um other countries I guess I don't know if other countries have a similar thing with different nations within the same country. It's confusing, isn't it? And I always think it's quite funny that it's named Great Britain. Now, Great Britain makes it sound like we think we're fantastic. But the word great isn't, isn't from that meaning. It's from the meaning big, because the nations have come together into a bigger um, union. So it's called, so great means big, not, not good. <laughs> So I think it's important to clear that one up because it makes it sound like we're country big heads. Not that we chose our country name. Um, I don't know where it. I don't know when it all came together. I think England and Wales have been combined with the same king and Parliament and things like that for a long time, but Scotland, not so much. So I'm sure I read somewhere that Scotland owed us money. And so um, the monarch of England said that they didn't have to pay it back if they could become monarch of Scotland as well. I think it was, I think it was Queen Anne. I think you can correct me, you historians. And uh, so then um, the next monarch was of all nations. Not Ireland is much more complicated. I can't pretend to know, to know anything about the history of Ireland. It's not nice, and it's yeah, as I say, complicated, very complicated. Um, still is a bit weird. We actually um, just having some problems with them right now. Not um, politically. I mean, not. Not personally, it's quite difficult, isn't it, sometimes to split politics from people. Like, if a certain country isn't getting on with another country, it doesn't mean to say that's anything to do with the people themselves. They might get on perfectly well. It's just to do with the politics and what's going on there. And so, yes, it's to do with immigration and the EU and... Ugh. Yes, I'm not going to talk about that. It's, again, it is complicated, but I don't agree with what we're doing, but, yeah, there's no simple solution. There are some people who think there are, oh, we can just do this, it's like, uh, mm. But it's also difficult, because when you're making these sorts of plans, um, you can't predict what the consequences are going to be. You know, you can guess, theorise, 
and then also things change. Now, I've been trying to go around all these white dots, um, but I'm beginning to find it a bit difficult, probably because my pencil's a bit blunt. But you, um, you could go over them in a white pen. If you want to, I may do that myself. I'm going to come down here for a bit now. I've got a sharp pencil. Um, so it's up to you how you deal with them. Um, I was thinking maybe I would use a glitter pen, actually. It's quite nice to have a bit of glow in our water. But I'm going to wait until I've done more to figure out what I think works. I've got to work out here what, what's going on. I think those two belong together. Oh, it's nearly lunchtime. Not, well, not as near lunchtime as I'd hoped. <laughs> it's quite um, fiddly, isn't it, these little bits? Yeah, I often have a political discussion with the children. They studied it a little bit and uh, find it quite interesting. And we've ha got, had elections yesterday for our local council. So that is in our tiny little ward, which is about, mm, only about five or six streets, I think, quite small. Um, our representative for that, and then our representative for the um, county. So they haven't counted up the results yet. And we had to elect our police crime commissioner. I never understand why that's a political thing, though. You know, they stand for a certain party, and I never know why. Right, this could do with another layer, okay? But I'm not going to do that on camera, because it's going to be very dull. I think what I'm going to do is actually stop now and do another layer off camera and then take a photograph. I think what I'm going to do to make it easier is colour over all those white ones um, because of colouring round them makes it messier and harder. So um, I'm going to go, as I say, back over all this like this to make it a nice dark layer like that and um, a bit more even, hopefully you see like that and then as I say I'll take a photograph of it so you may need to do that with yours you may not you may like it pale yours might be even whatever I think it looks better being a little bit darker like that rather than this but you can see the contrast now you might also want to go over that with a blue rather than this color you could use um, a cyan or turquoise instead to get a slightly different color but I'm going to keep going with this because I think it's working well with the other colors we've got so um, I am going to sign off now and say thank you for watching. Have a super day and happy colouring.